Hi there. This afternoon I've been playing with the Theremin project in this month's Magpie mag magazine, that's June 2017, and uh, I've got the um, sensor set up on a Raspbio hat, and um, you can see the circuitry on the back here, exactly the same as in the article, except I didn't have any, um, I think it was 470 resistors, so I've got two one Ks in parallel for one of them, so I've got three resistors instead of two but otherwise identical to the circuitry. Um, I've connected this to my Raspberry Pi, um, which you can see underneath there, Pi 3. And with the cable here we've got the monitor, which is already running the program in Sonic Pi, and it's running the Python program, Pyth um, Theremin 3, uh, in the background. You can see the code for that there, and you can see that I've made one or two changes to this. Um, the main change is that I've removed the round function from the um, send uh, from the um, message we're going to send, the pitch we're going to send. Uh, it was round sensor distance, and also I've changed the scaling on that to get a slightly higher range of note than the notes than the one specified in the original article. Uh, I've also reduced the sleep time uh, to 0 0.05 because I'm running on the latest development version uh, in GitHub, which is uh, currently 2.12.0 MIDI Alpha 5, um, although you can get a MIDI Alpha 6 uh, from Sam Aaron Direct if you become a Patreon uh, sponsor of his. Um, but this is running at the moment, this program, and if I bring Sonic Pi to the front, although the Sonic Pi program here is not running, uh, it does have a window here which shows you cues which are already being received from this. And you can see that at the moment uh, it's set to um, 150 for the reading that's coming in, uh, which is the scaled value uh, of 1 plus the 50 that I put in there. And uh, you can't actually hear anything because the Sonic Pi program is not running. But if I did start it running, you would see that I've also made one or two changes here. Uh, first of all, I've wrapped the whole thing inside an FX reverb call, which gives a slightly ethereal, more ghostly effect to it, which uh, it would be more similar to the original theremin sounds. Uh, I've specified the synth use, so I've used a sine synth here, which is a fairly smooth one. Um, and in the live loop listen do, uh, there's a couple of changes. Instead of the set schedule ahead time, I'm using the command use real time, which uh, essentially sets the set schedule ahead time to zero, which you can actually do if you've got uh, a sync command in this. You don't actually have to have a delay time inside the live loop. So that's what makes the whole thing faster and allows you to reduce the uh, sampling time interval um, in the um, Python program. Uh, secondly, uh, it's a slightly different syntax for receiving the information from the sync command. At the moment in this version you need to put slash osc uh, before the slash play this. Uh, that will actually, has actually been dropped, uh, no, th th that will actually be so for an, uh, uh, an osc received command in the final version. Um, so uh, that's just a small change in the syntax. Um, I've, I've just reduced the name of the um, uh, of the variable it's received in, called it n, and um, it's going to print the value of n on the screen as we run up. You can see from a, from a previous run it's showing the 150.0 value there, and it's inside a uh, an array. So to get the actual value of n out, you just take n bracket zero, the first element in that array, because there's only one there. You also also notice that I put some um, envelope parameters in an attack of 0 0.08 that makes the each note slightly less percussive as it starts and um, allows them to merge together into a more continuous sound uh, indicative of the original theremin. I've also set a release time of 0 0.05 um, so that we can have fast notes one after the other. I've reduced the amplitude slightly to 0.8 rather than the standard one. And I've also put on a cutoff so that if the note value being received is less than 92, it doesn't make any sound. So you're not getting a continuous sound when your arm hand is not near to the theremin. So that's the whole program there. Let's actually draw back from here and start it running, which I'll do now. And the program is now running. You can't hear anything because uh, my hand's not in the way. But if we come down to look at the theremin and I bring my hand here a bit closer,
So that's the Ceramine project. I think you'll probably do a bit more with it. You could add some more sensors in there, possibly maybe just a rotary control or maybe a light sensor as well and use that to control the amplitude of Sonic Pi or maybe a cutoff value and so get uh, further um, uh, input there. In the, 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 the original traditional Ceramine, you would have two inputs um, and uh, that, that's uh, something we can perhaps add in the future. But I hope you've liked the video and encourage you to go and have a look at the project, which is very, very nice. Even on the standard release version, it will work very nicely and you could do things like adding the reverb there and um, you could uh, really get quite a nice effect out of it. Thank you for watching.